don't want to have to explain to our grandkids why we didn't act when we had the chance. What is it, Dad? I don't know. You're gonna have to ask Grandpa. A conservation plan, including a network of marine protected areas, will help turn things around before it's too late. Tell the federal government to keep its promise and protect our oceans. Take action at healthyoceans.ca. Healthy Oceans. Very interesting ad right there. David Suzuki joining us right there. You know, you almost have a chuckle looking at that ad, but it's almost a sad reality. It's a us. poignant ad because, you know, the thought that my grandchildren might not be able to even know what a, a rod and reel are because they won't be able to fish. It's a very real possibility. The fish stocks have been depleted, uh, you know, countlessly over the years. What is the key issue? You're looking at the Pacific North Coast uh, in terms of the ocean. What are the key issues? What is causing this problem? Well, first of all, it's it's human beings, but it's it's uh, an interrelated thing. We think of the oceans out there, but we know that the oceans and the land are related. If you clear cut a, a, a watershed, guess what? Salmon populations plummet. The salmon need the forest. Now we've learned that the salmon actually, the forest needs the salmon the salmon feed the forest by their carcasses being distributed through the woods. Now we know that the ocean is being affected by the atmosphere because the air now is full of more and more carbon dioxide which dissolves at that layer, at that interface, into carbonic acid and the oceans are becoming acidified. So they're all a part of a single system. Humans come along and say, oh wow, empty oceans, let's put some fish farms here and let's put some uh, oil transportation routes down here. And we don't realize the implications of what we're doing are, over time, radically affecting the oceans. They mm -hmm. cover 70% of the planet. They're critical to our very survival. British Columbia is a province heavily dependent on the oceans, and we don't even have an oceans policy. The government, federal government said in 1996, Oceans uh, Act, we're going to protect the oceans. Didn't do anything. By 2002, okay, ocean strategy and uh, didn't do anything. Now we've got an oceans action plan mm -hmm. and nothing's being done. We need to protect areas. We know that marine protected areas where you stop any fishing or use of that ocean, leave it uh, be very, very effective. They become areas where the fish return and become nurseries to provide fish for other areas. We protect less than 0.5% of our coastline in Canada. And this is so shocking looking at that act that comes out 13 years ago. I mean, obviously there's commercial and industrial activities that you know are depleting the fish stocks, but it's it's almost at a point, whether it was global warming or any of these econo or environmental issues, that you have to see the true consequence. So we know that you know the, the, the stocks are depleting. What is the ultimate consequence if this trend continues for us and our communities? Well, can you imagine, first of all, the First Nations? These are fish people. Their whole culture and existence is dependent on the abundance of the oceans, the return of the salmon to their, uh, through their villages. They're the ones that are most heavily impacted. The whole way of life goes out the window. But if we think that uh, the, the fish and what happens to our fish stocks isn't ultimately an indication of what could happen to us, our existence depends on healthy oceans, healthy forests. All these things are critical to our own survival. And of course, overarching all of this is the impact of climate and what we're doing about it. And now we're seeing that it's affecting the oceans as well. British Columbia has a very long marine coastline, and we ought to be looking at what, we, what we're going to do to conserve and protect this area for future generations. Otherwise, as the ad shows, kids will pick up a fishing rod and go, hey, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. We had uh, Alana Mitchell, author of uh, a very important book, Seasick, Seasick on yeah. the show this week. And obviously, the ocean is important in stabilizing atmospheric temperatures. So what happens now in terms of action we can take? The average person watching at home thinks, I want to do something to, to be a catalyst, to create change. What can they do? and how much is reversible at this point? Well, who knows what is reversible and what's not. We hope that if we can pull back on our assault on nature, like adding too much carbon dioxide and, and clear-cutting too many forests, and all, that maybe nature will bounce back. That's what we've got to hope, that nature will be generous. But we've got to begin to discuss an integrated management plan of management and conservation and protection of a whole area. And that's what we're looking at now. There's this area called Pensima, which is the Pacific Coast uh, North Coast uh, Integrated Management Area, a vast area running from Port Hardy all the way up to the Queen Charlotte Islands and, and the coast of Alaska. Let's look at this whole area and see what we can do now to manage it in an integrated 
way. That's the challenge. So there's going to be a meeting here in uh, in British Columbia on, um, I think, March 26th, 27th. This will have First Nations, government, uh, environmental groups are going to meet and begin to look at this area called Pensima, this Pacific North Coast area, and, and begin to work out concrete strategies for for managing the whole system do you think it's going to be a government-led initiative that gets gets us to the solution or is it more uh, grassroots it's got to be it's got to be a wide uh, involvement first nations have the biggest stake i think in this governments have to be involved but i really think what's going to drive it is when the public begins to demand that something be done the history in canada is we promise all kinds of things at the federal level from the government oh yeah we'll do this you know or we'll do that we don't do a bloody thing and what ultimately drives it is when the public begins to put pressure on our elected representatives and say look we care about this we want something done about it and that's what we're hoping the ad will will get people concerned and begin to become involved and and uh, put pressure on government. What's the best first step for the average person? Well, I think uh, inform yourself, you know, go to our website, davidsuzuki.org, look at the information there about the Reed Seasick, lots of uh, uh, terrific books about the state of the ocean. If you care about the ocean, then I think you have no choice but to get involved. A lot of good insights, David. Thank you so much for coming on. For uh, all me. kinds of resources, healthyoceans.ca is a website you can go to find out more about this initiative. And of course, breakfasttelevision.ca will have more information about this entire topic. David, pleasure Great. meeting you. Thank you so much. Going to take a break here on BT. Let us out of news coming up. Stay with us.